Hi, and welcome to this week's video blog on some assembly required. Today I want to talk about fathers. Now, you may have had a great father, you may have had an absent father, you may have had a abusive father, you may have had no father around. Um, but I think we can all agree that fathers are important to a child's upbringing. And a disturbing trend that has been going on for more than a few years has been to regulate fathers to a more playmate kind of a thing, like they're not a full parent with the mom. And this is mostly due to women, um, mothers, who have uh, who don't have confidence in their partners to be full parenting partners. Um, I have several examples of this and then we can talk a little bit about how to make sure that your spouse, your children's father, is involved in a way that's healthy for both the father and the children. So my examples. Before I had kids, uh, one of my roommates had a sister who was married and this sister had uh, I think three small children. And I remember one time overhearing a conversation my roommate was having on the phone with this sister. The sister lived out of state. I never met the sister or the sister's children or husband. And the sister was complaining that she didn't have any time. She couldn't go and do X, a luncheon with friends or something like that. And I remember kind of hearing half the conversation and wondering, what was that all about? And, and I asked my roommate about it, and she said, oh, yeah, my sister can't leave the kids with her husband, who is the father of those children. And I remember blinking and looking at my roommate and say, why not? And she says, well, she just won't do things right. And I just remember responding with, but she married him and had kids with him. What, what, I mean, I don't understand. That was my first encounter with women who didn't think their husbands could manage their children. Let's fast forward to um, my own life. I love to talk about my own children. Uh, when I was, uh, when we were first married, I was going to grad school and my husband was very supportive of that and I was within a couple classes of finishing my master's and when we were going to have our first child so I talked to my professors and I talked to my husband and they were all very supportive of me continuing this even directly after the birth of our child our firstborn was born in September so I literally had three weeks of grad classes I took a couple weeks off after the birth and then I started going back to class this is night class three hours um, so I started going Till the break, about half of it, and then um, by the time our firstborn was uh, five or six weeks old, I was leaving her for three hours at a time with my husband, who had never held a baby in his life until our baby. He didn't know what to do. Frankly, I wasn't really sure what to do. Um, I had been breastfeeding her, and so we're like, okay, here's, I pumped, here's the milk, here's the child, I'm going to class, I'll see you later. And I remember calling him at break and hearing our firstborn wailing in the background and him going I don't know what to do and I'm going you have to figure it out I have to go back to class in retrospect that was one of the best things I could have done I gave him a basic schedule you know she should eat sometime in those three hours and she should probably go to sleep after that other than that figure it out you know he knew how to change her diaper was it always as tight as I could get it? Not in the beginning, because he didn't have practice. Did her outfit sometimes be put on backwards? Let me say, girl clothes can be very confusing. Sometimes I would dress a child, one of our girls, in a backward outfit because I didn't know which way it went. Did he make mistakes? Sure. But I knew he could figure it out. I loved that man and knew he was going to be a great father. But to be a great father, I had to give him complete autonomy over the children at various times. Sometimes, you know, as a stay-at-home mom, I was in charge most of the time. Did that mean I did everything right? Of course not. Did that mean that my way was the only way to do things? Of course not. And that's where we stumble as moms. 
we think because most of us are the, are the major caregivers, the majority of the time we are solo in charge of the children. And because of that, we think we know the right way to do something. We know the perfect way to do something. Let's just be honest. But that doesn't mean that our husbands, the father of our children, cannot make significant contributions to those kids. Sure, they're going to do things wrong. They're going to go out the door without a diaper bag and then, you know, suffer the consequences later. They're going to learn to bring snacks with the kids. They're going to learn those things, but they can't learn those things and figure out their own style of getting from point A to point B with all the kids in tow unless we let them without our interference, without our list of instructions. I've talked to moms who, when they go out to for a 30-minute walk with their friends, for an example, they leave a whole laundry list of things the husband has to do with the kids. I mean, come on, women, loosen up. Our husbands, the fathers of our children, they can do it. Who cares if there's cereal over the floor when you come home? I mean, you know, one would hope that your husband is going to help clean that up. But who cares if the outfit's on backwards and the children come home and they're tired and dirty from an outing? Um, we live um, in Northern Virginia, right outside of Washington, D.C. And for years, my husband would take, wanted to go to the National Book Festival, which was down on the mall where all the monuments and Smithsonian museums are. Well, it happened for many years. It happened to correspond with a book club that only met like a couple times a year. So I wanted to go to that. So I just remember telling him, well, sure, go ahead and take the kids. So he would take the kids downtown, sometimes driving, sometimes riding the metro. And they would come back and they would just, I mean, sometimes it was a total disaster. One time he forgot snacks and I swear I thought the kids were going to chew their arms off. They were so hungry. <laughs> but he learned. You know, um, he learned how how much to push our how much our kids could be pushed without naps. He learned how to deal with their meltdowns by himself, and this was great because it gave him confidence that he could do it, and he knew that I wasn't going to nitpick on it because hey, if he wants to take the kids out for a majority of a Saturday, who am I to say no? That's great. Go have that daddy children time, and it also showed him that I wasn't going to come behind him and criticize everything he had done. When he put outfits on that were backwards, I was like, the kids are clean, this is great. If he asked me, I would say, yeah, that's not on right. But I certainly wasn't going to go and redress a child, unless the child was totally uncomfortable. And that happened very rarely. Now, I've made my own set of mistakes, and I'm going to let him make his own set of mistakes. But I have total confidence in his ability to parent. I'm going to close with one other story. When my, our oldest daughter, our oldest who is a daughter, when she turned 13, I was up for an award um, with American Christian, uh, American Christian writers, um, and so uh, ACFW. And so I went to their conference in, um, I think it was in, uh, I don't know where it was, somewhere, Dallas, I think. And I, um, so I was gone over her birthday. Now, we let our children have friend parties um, a few times, uh, not every year. And this was one of those years where turning 13 is a pretty big deal. We said she could have some friends over. Well, she wanted to do a sleepover. She was going to plan the whole thing. Just happened to be when I was gone. So she had like six friends over. Um, I guess there were six or seven girls between 12 and, and uh, 13 over at our house. So um, on the... So when I win, I actually won the award, which was great. So in my acceptance speech, I get up there and I just say, you know, thank you to my husband who at this moment is home with my 13-year-old and six of her friends for a sleepover. And the whole room erupts. All, a lot of women there, they're all laughing, clapping. They thought that was great. But I remember in the days leading up to that at the conference, people would ask me, well, oh, you have kids? Who's watching your kids? My husband. Oh, anything special going on at home? And I would mention that he was going to be there for the birthday party. And there's this pause. And one woman said to me, she goes, really? You're not going to be there? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to be there. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. And she's happy. He's happy. Everyone's happy. 
everything was fine. But they were just kind of shocked that I would put him in charge of something so important as a 13th birthday. And um, I ended up writing an article for the Washington Post on the fact that we need, as women, we need to let our husbands be in charge of the kids, um, totally in charge of the kids. Um, and how, how that how that really encourages them as dads, as husbands. It really shows them that we respect them, that we love them, that we trust them. And it also shows the kids that, you know, dad does things differently than mom, and that's a great thing. So in closing, I'd like to encourage you moms out there, if you haven't, please give your husbands opportunities to be the solo kind of parent in charge of the kids. And when that happens, don't criticize. Don't second guess. Things are going to go wrong. Things are going to go right. But remember, you chose to have children with this person. You chose to have children with this man. And that means that he's going to need to be able to handle them. Start out small. Build his confidence. Leave notes when you need to. I mean, there are some things that he needs to know, like where children need to be if, you, he, if you're the one who's usually schlepping them around. But leave a lot of it up to him. Well, thank you for joining me and talking about dads and their important role in our families. Join me next week for another video blog of Some Assembly Required.